executed. Totally different nature. This world demands conformity. The God of this world who is Satan demands conformity to this world. Romans 12.2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's only by doing so that we understand the things and the ways of the Lord, true knowledge and wisdom, which only come from God. Yet Satan demands conformity to his ways, to his many truths that he offers people, that he whispers into their ears and they claim as their own. These are the truths of truths of Satan. He demands conformity into the hive mind, which is the structure of society in this world. That hive mind may look different and speak different languages in different parts of the world, but it is one hive mind. It is one hive mind. A hive mind is actually an entity. And it's uh, many people who unquestioningly revere, unquestioningly follow the head of it, which is Satan. Blind faith is what he asks for. And he gives those who, because if they, if they had the veil lifted, you know, they'd, they'd see the truth, what they were truly following. You know, he offers so many different pleasures and varieties and options and various truths and justification even and laws even. You know, um, so that people get lost in that pleasure and they don't question what they're following. Whereas, you know, we who are in the spirit, you conform as well. Conformity requires a forsaking of the free will. Those who conform to the world, they forsake their free will. All those freedoms, varieties, those are just bondages, bondages misrepresented as truth misrepresented as freedom. There is no freedom in the world. The only freedom in any part of the world is at the feet of Jesus Christ. So you who are born of the spirit, you know, you are being conformed by transformation. There must be transformation from the spirit of this world to the spirit of God and be a transformation. You're conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. You're conformed. You do so by forsaking your will as well, because that's what we all do. We are on this earth. We are born with free will. But the way we understand it, you know, is, is it seems to be misunderstood in itself because free will is not going around and, um, you know, we walk and we talk and we can do basically what we want. But we have the free will to follow the Lord Jesus Christ who will lead us to heaven. Or we have the free will to damn ourselves to the lake of fire. That's, in essence, what we have free will to do. So... You know, you're two totally different natures. You're persecuted, you're misunderstood because you're talking about two totally different natures. How can things of two different natures meet? Where would you meet? There is no meeting of the minds, even those that you formerly may have had, you know, conversations with, family, friends, relationships, and you find suddenly it's like you're speaking different languages. You just don't get each other. And that's painful, you know. There's no denying that's painful. It's difficult being misunderstood. It's difficult being set apart. Being set apart is a consecration of people that are consecrated to God or a set apart people. You are in this world, but not of it. So it's kind of like, sometimes it can feel like, you know, being a wallflower at the party, you know, it's, it's not an easy walk. It's not meant to be the broad path. Many walk upon, they have each other because many damn themselves to hell. The hive mind is a, is a very populated entity and it's chosen with free will. You know, we, we all have the Bible and we're called here to share the truth because it's not God's. He doesn't want any to perish. He wants them to come to the truth of who he is. But the enemy doesn't make that easy. You know, he indoctrinates from very young. And the Lord has the, you know, the our, our Lord is so good that when he, he finds us and he kind of wakes us up from this world, you know, he then reparents us. He then, um, if we were once indoctrinated, he had, what's well, the opposite of that, you know, he has to transform us. There has to be a transformation because we were so rooted in the world. We we're so rooted in sin. We we're so rooted in fallacy and illusion in that veiled dead nature that there must be a transformation. There must be a transformation either in order to conform to his will, to understand the good things and the right things and the perfect things. There is no understanding of that. People make in this world entire faith systems, you know, and I don't discriminate against any of them. They're all false. You know, they all lead to damnation, whether the new age faith systems, atheism, um, you know, um, Jews who don't believe in Jesus, 
Muslims who believe uh, they say we love Jesus, but they deny the crucifixion. They deny the resurrection. If we're not sinners in need of salvation, if Jesus didn't die for our sins at the cross and, you know, was resurrected three days later by the power of God, that's the gospel. That's belief in that is how we're even saved, you know. Even the demons know the name Jesus. That doesn't save them because it's about believing the whole gospel truth. So you're going to be misunderstood because you're of a totally different nature. And people didn't see that process. They didn't see your process of coming to the Lord. They didn't, you know, they see you walking around, living, breathing. They see you, uh, they remember how you were in your former ways, but they didn't see, you know, the true death to self. They didn't see the suffering. They didn't see any of the hardship that it took for you to get where you are today in the Lord. And that was by the grace of God. And they don't see him either. So of course they can't see you who are hidden in Christ Jesus, you know. We can't expect to be misunderstood. We can't accept to be uh, accepted by this world because it's like fear. In fear, people hate what they don't understand, okay? And they persecute what they hate. That's how it's always been. When Jesus Christ came, he brought, people hated him. They hated him. They hated him to the point where, you know, they didn't just like put him like a quick death. They tortured him. They humiliated him. They spat on him. They 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 gambled for his clothes. They forced a crown of thorns upon his head. They really went out of their way to hurt him. Why? Because that is the fruit of, of cognitive dissonance, really. That is what happens when the spirit, the same spirit uh, uh, that is upon you, you know, that's exactly what happens when you enter the scene of the hive mind. Because you threaten everything people have believed for decades, for their entire lives. Very comfortable in sin. Very comfortable in their truths and their new labels and their fake knowledge and their fallacies. Very comfortable are they. And you don't even have to say anything. When Jesus would, you know, he didn't even have to say anything. And the demon saw him from coming from far off because of the authority you carry. So it's like, who are you? To carry that authority. Of course they misunderstand you. Of course they're going to persecute you. Who are you? You know, in the book of Acts, let's see, I think I have that. Hold on. In Acts chapter 4, um, Peter and John come before the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin are the same group that uh, crucified Jesus, had Jesus crucified. And they come before them and they're proclaiming the word of God to the people. And at one point, they're like, who are these men? Because they are seeming, they're ordinary men. You know, they are unschooled men. But the word says that they, the Sanhedrin, knew that they were in the presence of Jesus Christ because of the authority with which they spoke, because of the uh, boldness with which they spoke. Totally different to the world. Sanhedrin were, you know, they had studied the scriptures. They knew the scriptures inside and out, okay? Totally different is the authority of God. You're talking about two different creatures. You can come on the scene. You don't even have to say anything. You know, you can come in the presence of non-believers and you don't even have to say anything. You're going to be misunderstood once you do. You know, you're going to be hated once you share the truth. But it's vital that you share the truth anyway. Persecution must be provoked. Holy Spirit said that through a message recently. Provoke persecution. Because many are still unwilling to walk in the fullness of Holy Spirit. You know, I don't know, you know... You're going to have to learn how to balance the line between being prideful while walking in the power of God. He's given many words of that because the Spirit, Holy Spirit is a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. That sound mind or self-discipline where it's also said in other versions is necessary because there's a balance here. Walking in power but love with a sound mind. You know what I mean? That's necessary. It's not a spirit of timidity. You can't walk in timidity because you're afraid to wield that power. You know what I mean? The Lord gives us wisdom. We still have free will. When we receive the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean we don't have free will. We're not little robots. The Lord gives us wisdom. He puts us through all this suffering and trials and testing. So we know how to walk that fine line, but it must be walked. You know, they didn't, they weren't silent before the Sanhedrin. Had they been silent because they're like, oh, we're going to get in trouble if we say anything. You know, had Jesus been silent because he's like, well, you know, Jesus was brought up on the same teachings of the Sanhedrin. Like, understand that. You know, he was brought up on the same teachings that they offered. So to all of a sudden bring the truth 
you know, of who he was and the truth of his him being the fulfillment of the law. He knew that was going to be offensive. Jesus wasn't, you know, sorry, my cell died. So while Jesus was speaking to people, whether it was in front of the elders that had taught him, whether it was in front of the Nazarenes, his the people he grew up with, or strangers, or friends, or family, whoever it was, he knew the hearts of men. He knew exactly what they were thinking, whether they believed him, whether they hated him. He knew that eventually these same people would persecute him, yet he spoke the truth anyway. And so, you know, I, I know for a fact that the body of Christ is coming into this place of, uh, for lack of better words, kind of just like toughening up, just really toughening up in the spirit, which is um, just the boldness of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. It's a boldness of the Holy Spirit that's no longer, you know, it's, it's unoffendable, untriggerable, as I said recently, because it's not about its own business. We only get offended when we're about ourselves but when we're about the the business of the lord you know we're just here to do the lord's business and when people don't receive it you know you kick the dust up off your feet and you go to the next town like the lord jesus did you know you don't have to resent people you have to understand that leading in love means that you see that those who are part of this world that are in that hive mind you know they're lost and not all of them will hate you or persecute you many are lost you know are lost sheep in fact you know many are just lost you know but there will always be people that do hate you that do persecute you and that can't stop you don't allow that to shut you up because that the enemy wants to do that the enemy wants to use persecution you know to shut you up to shut up the believers and it has for many years to the point where believers have dumbed down the actual gospel to the point where it doesn't offend anyone and guess what it's not the true gospel because the gospel is meant it should be offensive the holiness of the gospel should be offensive to those who are living in their sins it was once offensive to us you know what i mean we are sinners we are charged within the legalities of the spiritual world we're guilty prior to jesus christ you know what i mean we have offended God, so why shouldn't we be offended as we stand in our sins? You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean you speak, you spoke it in any harsh way or whatever it is. The word of God is a sword, says the word. It means to cut through all that pretense, you know, all the that sugar coating, all the the worldly vein. Um, you know, the Lord wants these 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 imaginations casted down. Everything that exalts itself against the truth of God. We, he wants us to contend for the faith. You know what I mean? So we have to understand that understanding misunderstanding is is going to come, and, and quite frankly, it'll be the least of it. You know what I mean? It'll be the absolute least of it and, and not to take it personal because it's not about you. You know, it's it's been about the Lord since day one. It's always been about the Lord since day one. You have a totally different spirit upon you than the spirit of this world. And how do you put that? Like you can, they can sniff it out. You know, you can sniff that out. The, the demon saw Jesus coming from far off. Not all people persecuted Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? But the truth is, how many really sided with him when it came down to it? The path is narrow for a reason. Make no mistakes. You know, on the broad road, yeah, there's lots of support for those on the broad road. Even for those preaching a, the broad road message, there's lots of support. It's a broad road. Everybody can fit. Everyone's going. And on the narrow path, you know, it's not only is it a narrow path, but prior, it's a small door to even get to the narrow path. You know what I mean? And there are few that even find it, says the word. You know what I mean? So for whether or not, whatever you do for the kingdom, however you're called to build this kingdom, many times as a consecrated people, it'll just be you and the Lord. Many times it'll just be you and him. You know, and that's not something intentionally you do. You'll have assignments, he'll send people to you, but quite often it'll just be you and him. And it's, you know, he's hiding you. He's keeping you. And he'll use you when he needs to use you. But, you know, find contentedness in the Lord. And don't be validated by anything other than who he says you are. Because you are so much more than the definition of this world who has no understanding. Don't expect logic from illogical people. Don't expect love from those who 
only exist in the fear and the death of their sins. There's no understanding there. Darkness has no place with light. And it's only by, you know, the Lord himself that anyone is saved. We're just, we're just glad to be here, you know, and coming out of speaking this really fake gospel, you know, as a church, as a body of Christ coming into the boldness of him and away from speaking in these ways that please men and, um, you know, the, the false prosperity gospel, which is just uh, super prevalent still even today people just don't talk about it they don't say oh you're going to be rich money some of them do some of the false prophets and teachers do but what they say now is blessings your blessings are coming your blessings are and it's just like it's just weird prosperity gospel because um you know you you never would have heard jesus you never would have heard the disciples being so fake and tawdry you know it's cheap it's really cheap it, it actually is it's just cheap to be like to have to promise people blessings you know um, you know, God says that we'll be blessed for our obedience and that should be good enough. And sharing that scripture should be enough for us to be like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but truly we're obedient because we love him and he knows the hearts of all men. So it doesn't even matter. But, uh, that was just a side note when it comes to really being about the father's business, you will be persecuted and you will be misunderstood and called names and you know people will act like you think you're holier than now oh you think this you think that you know and you got to learn to just like be ask the lord for strength and ask the lord you know i've had to pray many times lord help me i'm, I'm mad lord like i just be honest with him like i'm mad like this person hurt me or you know what i mean like da 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 and just like have to ask for love help me love them even in my heart like help me forgive this person even in my heart you know because we're not going to want to. It's not natural to want to love people that have hurt you. You know what I mean? We're not called to be fake about it. We're just like, bless your heart. You know what I mean? So sometimes you really got to like, you got to dig into that faith and just be like honest with the Lord and give him that pain. You know, whatever somebody tried to cast upon you, give that to him. Cast that care back upon the Lord. Because people will cast hate on you. They'll cast judgments on you, false judgments. They'll cast gossip, all sorts of things. And you, because you're sensitive in the spirit, you know, you are going to carry that. You're going to feel that burden and be like, what's wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you, okay? This is the burden that we carry, you know, carrying your cross. It's it's a heavy cross, you know what I mean? But that's why we have the Lord. That's why we have the fruit of the Spirit. That's why we have every promise of God. So, you know, continue just to be validated by the Lord himself, you know, and his people will always love you. You know, his people will always pray for you. His people are never going to look at you with that same misunderstanding, okay? It's not easy. It's not easy to put yourself out there. Uh, it's not, you know, uh, but like the word says, uh, behold, I send you out as sheep amidst wolves. You know what I mean? And then there's even instructions thereafter. Hold on. Thank you. I didn't want to mess that up. Uh, Matthew 10, 16, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. You know, those are instructions. You know, I know the word is so beautiful, but if you really look at it, it's like, it's always instructions. It's letting us know. And this is letting us know. And I, you know, I've, I've been myself prophesying this for as long as the Lord's put it on my heart, probably since the beginning of this ministry. I think I actually have this specific scripture in the, um, I put it up like the first day I made this ministry in, in my like info bio section, whatever. Uh, because this is what's so heavy on my heart. You know, what's all this preparation been for but to send us out as sheep amongst wolves? How does the wolf feel about the sheep? It persecutes it. It doesn't understand it. There are two different natures, predator and prey. And that's how the enemy looks. You know, weapons will be formed, but they will not prosper. Okay. But that doesn't mean, you know, we, we don't hide out. We're, we do not fear. Why would there be a reason to fear if we were hiding in a corner just like rapture me? You know, there's no reason to fear. We're commanded do not fear because the Lord is going to send each of you out as a sheep amongst wolves in one way or another. And the word says, therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Wisdom. Because he doesn't take away our free will. 
You know what I mean? And he pro he told us that all who seek to live a life in a godly life in Christ Jesus would be persecuted. So that means danger would come, but we have wisdom. In other versions, it says, wise as snakes. And innocent as doves, meaning to use wisdom. You know, uh, there were times when the Lord hid himself away because why? Because we're mission focused. We're not here to bash people over the head with the word. We're not going to hide the truth or sugarcoat the truth, but use wisdom on this journey. Make no mistake. You're in your ministry as it is. You're in your, as soon as we begin to mature in the Lord, the fire of the Holy Spirit naturally will minister through you. Whether or not you open your mouth, that's your free will choice. Whether or not you share the Lord, that's your free will choice. Many hearts are being tugged at, says the Holy Spirit. Many hearts are being tugged at to speak. And you think you don't matter. You know, you leave it in the hands of many other people. This is just coming through clearly. You leave it in the hands of other people, but it matters to the Lord. Understand that for you who are being called into ministry and you haven't started yet, understand that it's not about other people. Don't look at the ministries of other people. You'll never start. Don't look at anything when it comes to other people. If the Lord has put it on your heart to start a ministry, understand that it is pleasing to him that you start that ministry. Even if you just minister to people, you know, here or there on the bus at the corner, whatever it is, even if you just, um, you know, early on in my walk, I, I made an Instagram. I just needed to speak about him. I just needed to share him that I just made an Instagram and started posting. And from there and there, the boldness grew and the things I had to say grew and grew. And that's what the Lord wants to do through you. So however you have to do it, do that. And I encourage you also to, to begin journaling, to begin journaling. You got to get it out. What he puts in you, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. So side notes for everyone. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But here, um, and just in closing, behold, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snake and innocent as doves, because you already be wise in the ministry and understand that being innocent as doves, this is always about love. He gave us the understanding that we would become against. He tells us about the reprobate mind. We see how they treated Jesus. We don't get to hide from it. We don't get to return hate for that. There's instructions here. It's a narrow path for a reason. Many reasons why you're persecuted, why you're misunderstood. And they all have to do with him. Take it as an evidence. Take it all for glory that his glory is upon you, that you have the spirit of the Lord within you. He's with you and he's for you. And if God be for you, who could be against you? If the man who and the woman who can stand before God can stand before any man, Holy Spirit will give you the boldness if you're willing to use your free will to act it out. If you're willing to truly understand, I won't say uh, to know the hearts of man, but the, the Lord will absolutely, there's gifts of knowledge, all sorts of gifts that teach us, that give us an understanding of where people are. Like Paul said, I become all things for all people in order to win souls. You know, you'll have an understanding and that understanding is always going to lead with love. The understanding is not going to make you suspicious of people. The word tells us how the wicked people are. We know how they are. Love them anyway. You know, so it's not going to make you suspicious of people. It's going to help you to know how to pray for people, how to love people when somebody needs a hug. You know, uh, not every time you share the Lord with people is it going to be, hey, let me tell you about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, it's totally different. The Lord, the Lord is down to earth and he's going to lead you in ministry and down to earth ways, but you will be misunderstood along the way. You will be persecuted along the way, but regardless, you will be sent out as a sheep amongst wolves.